Hello, Jesse Good here. Today we're taking a look at the Lego Sesame Street set. This is an idea set which has 1,368 pieces, six minifigures, and releases November 1st, 2020 for $120 in the United States, where it's a Lego store and shop at home exclusive. This was provided me by Lego early, but all opinions in this video are my own. Let's take a look at the minifigures. First minifigure we'll take a look at is Big Bird. Now the design of Big Bird uses a totally new torso attachment at the middle there, which has a tail and the head all as one piece, kind of like a rubbery material. This design goes over a regular Lego minifigure torso, which attached that torso, we have the two chicken wing arm pieces, which were from series nine. We have gotten it in that yellow coloring before, I think it was in the Easter promo, but it's a nice part usage if you ask me. Now, I kind of think I maybe would have preferred if he had regular Lego minifigure arms, but then again, you would just be missing that top fluff with the arms. So this was a pretty good usage. Other than that, new torso, or sorry, new leg printing with the stripes even continuing to the side there, which is really nice. If you guys don't know how these chicken wing arms work, you can move them up and down as you'd want. You just can't get them to hold anything, which is a little bit of a shame. Next minifigure is Elmo. The design for Elmo uses a new headpiece like most of the minifigures of this set. And that's a huge thing for a LEGO Ideas set because LEGO Ideas never makes new pieces for minifigures. This opens the door to, hey, LEGO Ideas Legends Ella set maybe? Who knows? Either way, for Elmo, I think it looks good. I, I think it looks good, but there's some off parts. For example, they chose to make all the new characters with new headpieces have an open mouth in this set. To me, that looks odd. A more versatile expression is a closed mouth. You can make a closed smile or something. That is just more fitting for displays or different settings and stuff. That's just my own personal taste. What I will say, though, is also the printing for the black of the inside of the mouth looks a little odd. It especially looks bad on Cookie Monster, which we'll get to on a second. But I don't know. That's a problem that could have been fixed if you just went with a closed mouth. It wouldn't have needed printing. Also, I kind of wish that they had fur on the torso, at least, because Elmo has a little bit of fur to his belly and everything like that. You even see a bit of fur to the back of his head, and it just kind of ends there with an unprinted torso and legs. It doesn't look too bad from the front, but from the back, especially when you see that fur at the top, it looks really off. And for Cookie Monster, he comes with two cookies. I love the use of mid-legs in blue. That's really cool. But yeah, a lot of the problems with Elmo come even worse with Cookie Monster, where, like I said, the mouth printing is awful. Like, there's no printing at the top there, which I get is probably a technical issue, but that's just, it just looks bad. <laughs> and then the fur is at the top, but there's no fur on the torso. Almost feels like he's missing some bulk with the torso, which is something you can't really fix, because it would have just had to get outside of the LEGO minifigure system. But I think adding fur to that torso would have added a little bit extra detailing to make this look a little better. Next minifigure is Bert, and I will say this is probably the best looking minifigure of the set. Like, I think they just did an amazing job with Bert, funny enough, because he was one of the first minifigures to leak. This design uses a new headpiece, which, yeah, has an open mouth expression, but since Bert and Ernie are more humanoid characters, they could have that tongue inside there in the red. That looks a lot better than the black. The design of this headpiece actually has the collar as part of the piece, which was kind of surprising. And you can see that it is a hard plastic, and it just kind of attaches to the head like that, almost like a Lego Spongebob fish head. For Ernie, we have a new torso print, as well as that new headpiece. Again, like Bert, the open mouth looks a little bit better here with the detailing of the tongue and the redness. At the back, we've got some more torso printing. And this headpiece, if you're wondering, is actually a hard plastic, so that's really nice. And finally, we have Oscar the Grouch. Now, this design for Oscar the Grouch doesn't use any new pieces. It's actually kind of surprising in that way. It's a very well done figure where they just use the BB-8 body piece with printing on it for his head. Genius, genius. <laughs> and then underneath we have a Lego minifigure head which just kind of puts him in place in the trash can. So he's not stuck in there. So if you tilt it upside down, he's gonna fall out, but he's in there pretty well if you have him upright like that. He's not gonna fall over or anything. Really clever figure. Now let's move on to the build. But yeah, that is it for the minifigures. There's no Grover and there's no Count, which are two main characters that I would consider key to a set like this. And we don't even know if we're getting any other LEGO Sesame Street sets. We probably won't be getting any. So say goodbye to ever getting a Grover or Count minifigure. And for a $120 set, they could have added in those two characters. Yes, it would have required new pieces, but come on. Anyways, let's move on to the build of the set. But removing all the minifigures, taking a better look at the set, we have the brownstone building at the back here and then Hooper's store to the left. We'll take a look at the iconic brownstone first. 
And if you don't know what brownstones are, those are those townhouse-like buildings all throughout New York. Out at the front, we have Oscar the Grouch and his trash can. This bin of some of his belongings with a tire, a garbage bag, and this is a pizza box piece, which is not a new print, but still nice to get. This is a new print though on that heart tile piece. And then to the right, we have a little gateway that you can open up. Inside there's another bin, might be a little recycle bin. Also a little window to that basement. As for the stoop, we have a one, two, three clear one by two brick at the top there. That's nice to get. And then we have this little cooking with oatmeal cookbook, which that's a sticker at the front. And then on a one by two page inside, we have a recipe with one cup of oatmeal, one mango and buttermilk. Anyways, I like how they use this piece from dots at the side for the lights there. That's kind of interesting. And you can open up the doors just by pushing them like this. And then that leads us into Umbo's room. I like the phone on the wall, as well as this board right here, which is a sticker. You have some little cameos on there from characters like the Martians. And then to the right here, we have a small area with a rocket ship and his fishbowl. That's a nice print that I believe is exclusive to this set. And we have his bunny, as well as a small train that runs around the bed. I actually really like that little mini build there. The locomotive at the front looks really cool and how they use that. Oh, it wasn't BB-8, but the other, I don't even remember what the heck they're called now, but the other one that was not as popular used this headpiece. And then to the right here, we have this small area for a bed. Also seems to have a ball on this side as well as a lamp. And we have two more stickers of photo frames there. The one at the top getting cut off just a bit, but that has Elmo's father there. And then on top of the bed, we have a printed photo frame, which is actually from the Big Bang Theory Lego Ideas set, which is a little San Francisco bridge or something like that. And there's a build right above the board. I like Burr and Ernie's room on the second floor a little bit more as it's packed with detailing. We have two two by three stickered tiles, which are both pretty darn cool. We have two unprinted pieces, which are pretty darn cool, which is the Minecraft head in white, as well as this dinosaur in olive. Also, paper clips, which is a stickered one by two. Probably Bert, because he loves paper clips. <laughs> have you ever just looked at a paper clip? And then to the right over here, we have a love seat, also a clock at the top, and behind the seat, there's actually some books, which is some nice studs not on top techniques. And then in the corner, we have the bathtub with the rubber ducky. Oh, rubber ducky, you're the one. Of course, that rubber ducky isn't exactly exclusive, appearing in a few sets here and there that are actually cheaper than this, but it's nice to get that piece once again. Also interesting one by one tile, which is like a shiny cloudy blue, which they've used for some pieces before. We also have a little bit of bath water inside there. And they even have a curtain behind as well as the shower head up top, which you can move just a little bit. And at the very top, we have some extra details like a chimney, an antenna, and then two doves, which the dove piece isn't super common, though it was in a CMF series minifigure. Just hasn't come in too many sets. Oh, they also include this flying saucer, which they tell you to rest on the roof right here. Oh, and if you're wondering, while there is that basement window, there's no accessible basement. While we wrapped up with the interior of that building, there's some great details to the exterior. Whether it be some sticker details to the left of the building, where we have Bill and Sully's Construction Co. advertised, also this little side stairway, which has a plant at the top, and then at the bottom, there's a little mural for Abby Kadabi, which doesn't appear in the set, is a more popular new character, so maybe they should have included her as well. I also like these details around the windows where they're just suds not on top techniques that work really well. And then we have some side detailing here with a window cell that has a little milk carton. That's actually from the Lego Friends line. Moving on from the brownstone, we have some details up front. The build for the fire hydrant right here is pretty unconventional and cool. I like how that came out. But the street sign is so iconic. And one of the coolest parts that you could even display on its own, where it's on this four by four round plate, it's actually very easy to remove and just put on the side or whatever, but you plop it in this corner here. And we have two new prints, the Sesame Street tile at the bottom and this round top flat bottom tile with the one, two, three. It's also nice to see Mysterio's fish bowl helmet in whatever color this is. It's the same color as little lights at the side. I don't, I don't know what that's called. <laughs> There's a mailbox build, which this design, I don't know. It's a very weird design with syringes as the legs. That just doesn't work. 
they tell you to plop it at the side of the building, but there's no connection to keep it in place. So it just kind of wobbles there until it falls over. Ugh. And then to the right corner, we have Big Bird's Nest. Really like the stickered two by two with the snuffy photo there, as well as a little mailbox. The nest part itself is just this little bottom barrel piece. We do have two blue roller skates for Big Bird there, as well as Big Bird's teddy bear. And Big Bird does look pretty adorable in there. But right behind that piece is actually a little sketch of Mr. Hooper from the show. So it's really sweet to include here. We also have a printed one by four tile at the back there. You can push this part up and down if you'd like. A little birdhouse at the very top here. And then to the side, I really like how they built this side tree design where they use a Technic pin connection so you can move it up and down and even rotate. Or even this part at the side of the tree, which at the very top has a small car. And there's not too much else to show with Big Bird's Nest. And then the final part of the build is Mr. Hooper's store. At the very front, we have a basket with a carrot, a banana, and then a newspaper that says Super Grover saves the day again. Well, there's Grover, but it's not in the set as a figure. Then we have a winter porridge shortage as another newspaper, both of those stickers. I like how they built the top of the building here with this part as well as just using the tiles at the side on some studs on top pieces. Works really well. Also, we have a sign that says Hoopers. There's a sticker of a 1x4 on both sides there. The other side even having another sign that says, if you need it, Hoopers has it. I like the build of this lamp right here where it uses candlestick pieces in black as the base, which is kind of interesting. Also, there's a small dining table, more reasons to have Grover in this set, which love the sticker on there. It's using one of those new circular tile pieces from the Lego Mario sets. Small build for a chair there, which the bottom is pretty interesting. And to take a look inside, well, we could see a coffee cup, one of those one by one prints of the quarter. Wait, quarter, dime, what am I saying? Nickel, it's five cents. <laughs> and then inside, it's very hard to see the wall, so I'm gonna have to pull it out. But there's some pretty good prints here, whether it be the one by two peanut bag print from the Lego Minions airplane set, which is supposed to come out next year, it was delayed, or that one by one circular pinwheel piece, which I remember seeing in the Chinese New Year temple set or the one by ones from Lego Dots, or that orange juice carton, which was from Lego Friends. Also, there's a little cash register to the right here. Oddly enough, at this side, we have two one by ones with Technic pin holes. Hmm, are we actually getting expansion? Maybe we'll have Grover in the count. And then a floor above, we have this room right here. I like this chair and this yellow coloring. Two by three sticker, which looks pretty cool. Also another one of those new round tile pieces with the count on there. Again, I don't know why the count isn't a figure in this set. We also have a two by three sticker of Guy Smiley. I hope I said that right. <laughs> I can't do the Jim Henson voice. Then we have two one by two VHS tapes right there, which means this is a VHS player. Glad they put a VHS player because Sesame Street is from the time when VHSs were around or the time right before, but you get the point. At the very top, we have this little air conditioner unit and a small bat for the count. I will say, reflecting a bit, I don't like the wall arrangement here where we have an open wall on this side and this side right here because having it on display like this where the brownstone is facing forward, you're always gonna see those open rooms there and it just doesn't look good when it's not covered. Usually the back sides are open because you're not displaying it from the back, you're displaying it from the front so you don't see the openings to these buildings. So to me, that looks very awkward. Maybe that's why they added these one by ones with the holes in them so that you could add your own Technic pin connection to wall right there. Or maybe they do plan on making expansions and we're gonna get more to this store, but there's really no other way they could have done it because they can't take off this wall because this wall has the door. You can't take off the other wall because it has that opening. And then this wall has all the products. So I get why it is this way. It just looks a little odd. Anyways, that's it for the builds of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and the final verdict. The box for the set using the 18 plus design, which yeah, this is an 18 plus set, which I get it because it's a collector set. It actually looks really cool. Like this works a lot with this set. I even like the green border there. And then at the back, there's some different shots of the set, giving us different views and such. Even a little sketch right there, which is weird to see for the Sesame Street. The instructions stood out to me where the cover is just the minifigures. That's actually pretty cool. And then inside, we have some information on Sesame Street, Sesame Workshop, and the fan designer. Oh no, no, it just 
damn it, instructions. We also got the Lego designers as well. The very end, one, two, three, Sesame Street logo. And I believe there's some more promotional artwork. Yeah, right here. They have a little Lego ideas ad with Bert and Ernie, which I thought it was cute to include them on there. So overall, of course, I love this set, but it's right up my alley. Muppet stuff, Sesame Street, which is from my childhood, buildings, cartoony, yeah. So what do I think of this for you guys? Is this worth your money? Well, first off, you gotta be a fan of buildings because this brownstone building and Hooper's building is the build of the set. And I think they did a fantastic job with those buildings. It's architecture I haven't seen from Lego and to have it with this much detailing, it looks fantastic with some studs not on top techniques around the windows and all around the building. And then the interior is just filled with references to Sesame Street. Very colorful and fun inside there. But I think at the end of the day, if you don't care about Sesame Street, you could just buy this, plop that building into your city, not apply the Sesame Street stuff and you'll be fine. But yeah, the builds do rock. Even if there are little shortcomings, like I said, the wall situation with Hooper's store is kind of weird. There's some other weird elements like that little mailbox or whatever that just doesn't stay in place. I don't know what piece just fell off. <laughs> but with all things considered, for $120, they could have made this $100 I thought it would be a good price. They could have made this $130, it would have been a good price. $150 might be pushing it, especially with those missing minifigures. So with all things considered, I'd rate this one a B plus. Really love how this one came out. I think a lot of people will enjoy it even if they don't care about Sesame Street with a lot of the different build techniques. Funny how this is an 18 plus set, but it does merit that age range with all those complexities to the build. That's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks again to Lego for sending me this early and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.